Perfect. Welcome to the Mizell Show. An inspiration for a new generation. Hi, I'm Alana Mizell, a loving mother of two, a devoted wife to Stephen, and an entrepreneur helping women realize their dreams and potential. And I'm Stephen Mizell, caring father of two, a devoted husband to Alana, and a driving force to help young men prepare for life after college football. And if that wasn't enough, we're a biracial couple. She was raised in the North, but I was raised in the South. The only thing normal about our lives. Who am I kidding? It's never normal around here. Join us for The Mizell Show. Right now. Hello. We are back. By the way, this is take two. It is take two. It's okay. It's all right. It's fine. It's It's fine. It's really... Bricks. Bricks. Um, So... We happy 2023. Yes, happy 2023 from the Mazel Show. When we started talking about this episode, Steve was like, let's do like a New Year's one. I was like, it is past New Year's. Like, I feel like there's a day, like the fourth. If you're still saying happy New Year to me, I'm like, it's we're four days in. I mean, but is that morbid though? Like, are you like, like, what, like, what can, like, what can people, roll. what can people be excited? Happy, I mean, I can, happy New Year, line. Like, no, no? <laughs> that's weird. It's like, I don't know. We've talked about this, like in our personal lives, how people put events and things up on a pedestal and New Year's has always been one of those for me. I've never had a New Year's that I was like, oh my gosh, that was the most fun I've ever had. I remember our first New Year's was so much fun. Did you not listen and care about that? But like comparative to like some of the other times that we've had fun, it doesn't even rank in the top 20. Uh, it's still number one in my book. You're so <laughs> lying. Y'all. No, I, I agree. He's just trying to make me feel bad. I agree with it. Like, people put the whole New Year's on such a high pedestal. and they Oh, what are you going to do for New Year's? They hype Where are you it going up. for New Year's? And maybe, maybe what are you wearing we, for New Year's? Maybe we are the ones that are, like, for some people, it's a big deal. And I, and, some and people, it's a deal. It's a huge deal. And, okay, so I was actually looking up different recipes. In the in the Asian culture, it's more of like a familial deal mm-hmm. of like we've made it together through another year. And that I can respect and that yeah. I enjoy, especially this year for us. Yeah. No. But in terms of like the resolutions and all these things. But now one of the newer trends is picking a word for the year. I won't say it's a... I don't, I think it's a trend that we have seen people do. We've seen the resolutions. We've seen people like, I don't believe in resolutions. I'm just going to do me for the new year. All these like, things that are it. happening. You do you. Um, and, you know, the people have, have said the whole word thing. But I think it's a, something that mm-hmm. you just have to – I mean, you you have to tell people, like, what you're striving for. But you also can keep things close to the vest and just work in the darkness. You can just have these things that you're able to do and want to do but not have to – post it on a social media or broadcast it <laughs> or 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 put it out there and I think that's something that you have done a good job of recently you've you've bought a calendar and in that calendar yes. it is very minimal but it's also impactful because you're able to see that calendar for for your own sake yeah so let's back it up my focus this year and really it started before the year even kicked off was just a level of consistency. Like, where am I in my health journey? Um, We haven't really talked about this, but I've been working to heal my polycystic ovarian syndrome holistically Um, for a myriad of reasons. We could do an episode on that entire topic. So because I'm trying to heal it holistically, I will not get a quick fix response. It's just not, that's just not how holistic goes. But at long term, it will be better for my health, my kids' health, etc. So I knew I needed to create something that helped me with consistency. And so being con- the word consistent is my word for 2023. I can see that. Um, and really just a constant reminder of it's okay to not feel like it, but it's also more important to be consistent. And visually being able to see it. So on this calendar, I've actually got it from Gracie Norton, which I'm sure a bunch of people follow on TikTok or Instagram. Um, she also struggles mm. with, well, she has over 700,000 followers. So Okay. Um, I mean, she's a big deal in this house. I would definitely say she's that. She's a Gracie, big deal Gracie, because yeah. she has healed her PCOS holistically. So what 
she got a calendar and started mapping out a few things. And I map out similar things. So movement, that could be anything from a 10 minute walk to hitting my step goal, which is, you know, 10,000 steps. Um, and then doing something for my mental health. That could be just taking a couple minutes and doing, um, you know, my lymphatic leg drainage with my feet up on the wall, which is two minutes long, or reading a couple of pages of my book, or... Okay, that's 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 false. Like, Alana what? doesn't read a couple pages. Like, okay, when you a read chapter, a book... Thank you. Let's say, or three. Read, or four. No, read... Or the read, rest of the book. <laughs> read a book. No, I, I, I get what you're saying. Okay, I, I agree with that. Read a book, a whole book. Or, okay, so th- something self, self-help. Was. Yes, okay. So Not self-help. Mental health-wise. <laughs> I was thinking books. Mm, Mental yep. health-wise. And then I have one for complimenting myself, which is one that Gracie mentions in hers, because I think that that is one of the challenges. Back, it was 2020. In yeah. February of 2020, we kicked off mantras in our house, which is yeah. crazy. It's been three years. Three years. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Wow. Um, and so we kicked off mantras in our house in February of 2020. And really, that was a time to focus on the love holiday, but loving ourselves better Mm -hmm. Um, and saying words and our mantra that we know from others to be true, but don't know ourselves to be true. And we don't remind ourselves enough that it's true. Yeah. I I agree with that. So there's another episode for another day. But so on there is a compliment, which is so hard to do to look yourself in the mirror and compliment yourself. It's awkward. But as you get going it's a great thing to kind of hold on to for the day so it's almost like a but mini why is for that such a hard thing to do because i truly think not just you but in general people will go out of their way for a random stranger for a boss for a cousin for a mom to say something good to themselves but they would go an entire day month week without saying one good thing to themselves why have we forgotten to remember who we are and compliment ourselves well, I think that it gets weird because our we have these voices in our head. And, mm. you know, I like to call mine Wanda personally. Sorry if there's Wandas out there. And I've even done some posts about it because the biggest, you're your biggest hurdle. You versus you. Yeah. It's you yeah. versus you. Mm-hmm. And so many times it's the voice in our head. And I think we've talked about it actually on the podcast. If the voice in your head actually came out and spoke to you the way that you're speaking to yourself, you I like personally, I would punch them square in the face. You'd be fighting words. It'd be, yeah, knock it'd be, them yeah, out. Yeah. Like straight to the jugular. Yep. Like I'm going for you. And so a lot of what the consistency is when like holistic health is actually focusing on is almost retraining your brain, like really listening to those thoughts of negativity, like, even if I go by a, a window, like, mm-hmm. oh, my legs don't look good. Or, you know, right now I'm working with a coach and, like, sending videos to him. And I'm, it's so hard to video yourself doing workouts. Like, because I'm not an Instagrammer come, when it comes to workouts, y'all. So it's just, and so I, by nature, pick apart my body. But if yeah. somebody were to come at me and pick apart my body the way that I do in my head. Yeah, it'd be a problem. <laughs> I mean... Not only for me, but then I'd complain to Stephen, and Stephen would be at somebody. Yeah, yeah, it would, so, it would be a, it would be a problem for so sure. So I think it's more so just practicing the nature of being complimentary to myself, mm-hmm. and actually being able to hear something that's positive to myself from myself. Yeah, in just one, and I've been trying to do it in the morning because. I think that it kind of sets up what I'm focusing on for that day. Whatever that compliment is, mm-hmm. I've noticed that I repeat it a couple times throughout the day. If I'm starting to get stressed out, I'll say that compliment again. Like, take a deep breath. Say that compliment again. And there's a ton of studies that talk about your, you know, whether it be meditation or, you know, whatever you want it to be, but kind of training your brain in a positive manner towards yourself and that being almost as healing as... Western medicine. Yeah. There's tons of studies on it. I'm not going to go into it. I am not a doctor. But. But just in general, like if your body is, as we know, is this, your bond, your body, your mind, and your, are just this vastly complex system. And 
the thing that drives this vastly complex system is your your thoughts and your 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 words to yourself. And so if yeah. you're trying to get this vastly complex system to do a goal or to get up and move to I don't know, whatever you're trying to do, but it's constantly being reinforced by negativity or negative things you're saying to yourself. Right. I mean, how will you ever, I mean, I agree with, I mean, I didn't even write those studies that you've read, but I, I can see why, how powerful, how it, can powerful it can be. Yeah. And there's, there's like ton. I mean, th- your neurons are so powerful, y'all. Mm-hmm. And compliments can set off serotonin or dopamine to be able to release endorphins to make you happy, make you smile. If somebody gives you a compliment and authentically means it, you may get a little bit embarrassed. Like your cheeks may get flushed. But, your, like endorphin, shy, your, but your, your endorphins are going off. They're firing. And even and think the about it. And serotonin's flowing. <laughs> even think about it at work. Like you're wanting to do a good job. You're wanting to somebody, somebody to say thank you. You're mm-hmm. wanting somebody to say, I see you. You're doing good. You know, and Christ actually says, well done, good and faithful servant. Mm. So if it's biblically designed that way, then why don't we talk to ourselves in that manner as well? Yeah. And we're waiting for somebody else externally. And for me, there's also a lot of uh, faith walk in saying a compliment to myself. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's also, you know, we're made in God's image. I am God's child. Mm -hmm. So being able to articulate a compliment of something that he has gifted me. Is also honoring him in that moment. And that's something that I heard recently through, you know, podcasts. And actually, I think <laughs> I heard this through, I don't know where I heard. Long story story, it says, don't sacrifice the gift. Mm. And don't sacrifice the gift that you have in terms of your current body, uh, no matter where it stages it, it's in yeah. right now. But don't, don't sacrifice. Because mm-hmm. like you were just saying, it is something where you walk by your faith that if you truly in embrace and enjoy and compliment where you are it could fire those neurons to help you achieve wherever mm-hmm. you're trying to go yeah but i i think you putting that compliment on your calendar is is a huge thing and it's not an easy thing to stick to no and so that's the point of the consistency calendar for nobody else except myself quite honestly and i even texted steven today that probably for the first time in my entire life I am doing and being, quite honestly, very selfish and for myself. Not that I'm not paying attention to my kids and my husband. Yeah. But it's not to achieve a weight goal. It's not to achieve anything else other than mind, body, health. Yeah. And so consistency is going to be required to stay that route. I mean, I started it before January. It's probably been... Mm, working on two months. Two months, yeah. Now, really focusing on those two things after lots of therapy. Lots, lots, lots of therapy. But I think not so much, like the therapy has been, your last year of therapy, I would say, has been more of the icing on the cake because mm. the ingredients and the bake that goes into the cake has been you really taking things into your control. Like you researching, you listening to podcasts, and I think when you hear people say those things, it's it's a dark and scary rabbit hole you can go down when you do when in terms of researching and what's yeah. out there. Yeah. But to be particular about the people you're listening to, the books you're reading, the articles you're reading, but also still knowing that you can give yourself your own grace or your own uh, mm-hmm. diagnostic, because sometimes you can go down, you know, following a diet or following you know a health coach or whatever and all of a sudden you're you've lost who you are but i think you've yeah. done a really good job of that in in quote unquote the bake but you know therapy's been huge and it's important but i think also you've done a lot of things and as we continue to grow in this podcast we will let you guys hear more <laughs> of this journey it'll definitely be an episode by itself did you know that i sell makeup not only do i sell makeup but The makeup that I sell is 3D makeup, which allows you to highlight and contour your face in a super simple compact. As a mom, I could not survive without my simplified routine. Not only that, but it's exactly what you need, exactly when you need it all in one spot. Go ahead and check out Alana Mizell on Instagram or alanamizell.com to learn more.
Um, if it goes back to me, I'm going to say my word, my word, I'm going to say word of the year, but my word, my current word is patience. Um, I think with patience. me. <laughs> uh, yeah, kind of, no. Hey. Pa- patience with, with myself mm. and patience with my journey. Um, I have been in a rat race, I feel, for the last three plus ish years. Um, and it's funny because it all started. So to kick off my journey when I was, you know, going into college athletics and sports, you know, we were challenged to go to Charlotte, North Carolina to like go out on a whim and just see Mm -hmm. how it goes. And the coaches conference this year is actually back in Charlotte. Five years ago. Oh, five years ago. So five years I've been on a rat race. At least five. I don't know when it was. I try to do it around the time frame when Adele was born. So Adele is about to be seven. You went when she... Yeah, about five years. Jeez. Just after she had turned one. So, long yeah, story so six short. Six years. Six years. So, now with that being back in Charlotte six years ago, we everybody call it, um, I think patience is important to me because... I have gone through the the influx of careers of mm-hmm. like training, working out, and going for those those quick fixes. And I have a great role model in the house and you that shows like, hey, you have to work on certain aspects if you want to see the results mm-hmm. and stick with those results. And it is it's it's frustrating, it's daunting, and you know with the the ebbs and flows of 2022 with, you know, the ruptured bicep and other things that we had going on, there was, there wasn't able to be the quote unquote consistency that I wanted. But if you, if you couple that with patience, you give yourself Mm. grace Mm. and you give yourself understanding like, Hey, you know, you just ruptured your bicep or you just had life happen to your family and you have this and it's okay. Okay. Wait, 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 we got to go back. You said essentially that challenge plus patience equals grace. Yes. That's beautiful. Yeah. Challenge plus patience equals grace. So the variable that you think that you are missing is that middle piece. It's that patience piece. Mm-hmm. So that way you can get to grace for yourself. Yes. And in, and in, and in be in that state of grace that I am understanding where I am and where I want to be. And it's, mm-hmm. it's okay. And, I have a question about that in particular. So when you say a state of grace, what does that look like for you? A state of grace. What is it, or what is, I should say, not what does that look like? What does it feel like for you? I think a state of grace is that when I am able to, as they say, put the 10 toes down and you wake up in the morning, if you're going to the gym, if you're not going to the gym today, you're going to work, you are, you're, you're, you're happy. Okay. And you are enjoying it. You're not worried about, man, I didn't get to the gym today. Or I didn't get a chance to do this today. Okay. Or So it's a patience level specifically correlated to working out. I would say working out. And, and fitness. And, fitness for I would health. say health. I would say health, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would say health. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's definitely a patience so in terms of health. your state of grace exists when you give yourself patience in challenge. Mm-hmm. In challenging scenarios relating to working out working out and yeah i would say i would say yeah so i'm gonna just keep on digging because one as well is there an inner child that didn't get the grace that you're longing for now no i mean i don't know like why is working out the thing i feel i feel i know why mine is I mean, I feel working out is the thing is because it's, it's the one time where I, I'm to myself and I enjoy it. Okay. And it's, it's, it's enjoyable and it's, yeah. it's something that. So in a challenging season, how do you create time for yourself if you can't go to the gym? Or if you don't go to the gym. Yeah. Very true. I mean, that's yeah. something that you have to, uh, it's something that, you know. And I think everybody's different. I think everybody's different. Yeah, for sure. But I think that's when it reverts back to me in terms of seeing you and your journey with nutrition <laughs> and food and meal prep, like not even meal prep, but just being able to say, hey, I'm not able to 
go to the gym or I'm not able to do X, Y, Z, but I'm also fueling my body and I feel good about it. But what you said was that the gym is a space for you to be by yourself. Yeah. So putting food with the be by yourself is actually assimilating still health correlating to working out. So True. it's not actually about being by yourself. Yeah. Well, I do like being by myself at the gym, though. I don't disagree yeah. with that, but it sounds to me as if you're fulfilling some sort of prophecy that's in your head. Because you immediately correlated working out with food. And that's how you're going to make yourself feel better throughout the day, is by eating right. But that's not grace. Grace is gifted to you without you having to sacrifice anything. Yeah. That's true. So what is it that you could plug into your day to allow for patience to happen in challenge? Because remember, challenge plus patience equals Equals grace. grace. Yeah. So if you remove what gives you patience, Mm -hmm. which is working out in time by yourself. Yeah. What could Stephen implement that allows for you to have patience and give you a similar result? Now, for us, more than likely, nothing is going to result in the same level of patience as getting a good workout. Yeah. That's just how we are. I mean, you could get me a PlayStation 5. I think that would really okay. help. Okay, that's not happening. <laughs> no. uh, we are having a hard enough trouble with iPads in this house. I'm not getting a PlayStation 5. Um, but I think that's something that yeah. like, for you to heavily reflect mm-hmm. on because as we started to dig into it, the result wasn't grace. Yeah. It was sacrifice it was almost punishing your body. Not saying that food nourishing food is punishing. Yeah. But when you put a positive or negative connotation towards food, mm-hmm. that is punishment. And yeah. saying, I can't eat that cracker because I didn't work out today. And I don't have enough grace for myself to mm. realize that I can't eat the cracker without punishing myself so mentally. Mentally. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not necessarily patience. Well, I mean, I think it's you've got to figure out what, how to disconnect the food and work out to give yourself patience in a challenging time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I see what you're saying, but I think I'm still, yeah, I see what you're I saying. I mean, we're nine days in. We're, we're nine days in, but I, I feel, I mean, it's it's a challenge to me to look at the word patience and, yeah. and be able to reflect well, and one thing that I haven't done yet, but it's on kind of been in my brain is just to look up the word consistent. Mm. Okay. What are the different definitions? What do those mean? Maybe yeah. journal about, okay, how does that make me feel? What does that make me think? There's a lot of times when I think about consistency, I'm like, is that something I can live up to? Yeah. That's why I've got the consistency calendar to realize if I do one of those things, mm. I've stayed consistent to myself. Yeah. And so maybe it's that. Maybe it's looking up the word patience and all the forms that it can have. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's like, you know, I thought it was patient, but really it's grace Yeah, is what we're looking for. And like the word grace, of course, has so much much. content that you could look at. And I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's challenge. Yeah. Maybe it's the full equation trying to figure out what the pieces are and Mm -hmm. how... How do you live? Because I feel like that is just such a beautiful picture of the world and like life mm. on this side of heaven is challenge plus patience equals grace. Yeah. You know, because we're not taking anything away. No. We're not saying challenge minus patience or no. patience minus challenge equals grace or anything of that. No. no, it's those two things kind of combined. No, I think that's, that's awesome. You're right. I mean, I ouch. think it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's ouch. It's, ouch. It's reality. And that's why we, we, we get on this and have these conversations. So with that being said, I mm-hmm. think you need to, what is your word for for me this year? Mm. Um. Oh, that's hard. I have a word for you. If you okay, go it. ahead while I think about it. All right, so you kind of brought it up earlier, and it's kind of frustrating, but uh, <laughs> my word for you this year is selfish. For me to be selfish? I think your my word for you <laughs> is selfish because this, mm. in, in, in our 10-plus years of knowing each other, 
about to be 10 years of that anniversary pretty soon. We've um, known each other for th- almost 13. I said 10 plus, okay. but I am married for you 10 years. Mm-hmm. Um, That's I, crazy. I think you texted that today about this is the first time I'm in the gym doing this for me. Mm-hmm. And I've seen your, your growth and I've seen the low moments of you wanting to maybe resort to quote unquote quick fix. And even trust yeah. me, guys, her quick fix is not like a truly dangerous quick fix. It's it's a quick fix, but it's not like something it's, uh, crazy. It's that quick. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think this is the first time I would I would challenge you to be selfish. But mm. you know, putting you first in terms of your your eating and yes, you're feeding your family, and we're all challenging us to to change our our lifestyle and when i say eating guys i'm not saying i'm saying it from the fact of like really going through and this is um a another podcast like fueling (laughs) yeah we do fueling your body based on your your womanly moods Mm -hmm. um your cycle your cycle cycle sinking cycle sinking um you really taking the time to take care of yourself Mm -hmm. because you're looking at the longer long game for the first time, not the first time, but like you really said, Hey, I would say that I am looking like authentically looking at the long game for the first time. Mm. Like I think I've said it before. I think we both said it before. Right. But I, yeah. Like for the first time probably ever in my life, I didn't feel the need to talk to my parents about, what workout I was doing to mm. show them that they could be proud of me from a sports acumen. Mm. No urge. No urge. I have no urge to talk about what I'm doing in the gym. None. I mean, I will happily tell somebody if they ask me. Yeah. But whereas previously in my life, if I wasn't telling my parents, I was telling thousands of people on the internet. Yeah. And I just, I'm happy to share my knowledge about PCOS. I'm happy to share what I've read about cycle syncing. But when it comes down to like actually doing the workout and being in a space for me, I just don't need other people involved in it. Yeah. It's like yeah. the most like lonely thing. <laughs> but like, it's weird because I don't feel lonely you in it. You don't feel lonely, but you also. Because I'm doing it only for me. You're doing and it for not you for and you're, and you're having that, that hit and that glow of serotonin because you know mm. that you're doing this for, for yourself. So mm-hmm. my word for you is selfish. My word for you is tender. Mm. And tender love and care. Yes, absolutely. Oh, yes. Hey. Hey. <laughs> uh, no, tender. No, I mean, like... I mean yes, but <laughs> yes, but and and okay. yes, but and or <laughs> okay, got it. And tender or gentle with yourself. Mm. Yeah. My sweet Stephen tends to put a lot of pressure on himself. When it comes to me, he's talking about me being selfish. What does that mean? That means that he's got the kids more. That means that he's got to listen to me read all these things, and it goes straight over his head. No, I tune into the podcast, and then I tell her, like, whoa, this is You do. (laughs) You do. But there's sometimes that you're like, you lost me. Mm -hmm. But I also think that there's been times that Steven's a fixer. He wants to make sure everybody's happy. In our house, we've got, you know, as calm as we can. At least harmony, even if it's loud. Mm -hmm. But tender to yourself in terms of it's okay if it's not. Mm -hmm. It's it's okay if we're working on that patience with ourselves and you don't have to fix me. Mm -mm. You can't fix Briggs, Lord. I hope we've caught on to that crazy child. Yes. And I mean, even Adele, as she gets more dramatic by the second, it feels like. Be tender and kind to yourself that as a dad, you're doing it all right. All right now. Well, no, <laughs> no, I think that's that's beautiful. I think that is something that we, you know, are always open with you guys on the Mizell Show. And we are always here to help you guys come alongside us. But I think tender is something that, again, it, it yeah. It goes along with patience. It goes, it goes with right patience. along with patience. Along with patience. Grace, challenge. I mean, all I mean, the words. And selfish goes right along with consistent. Consistent, yeah. 
because you have to be able to be willing to give something up for somebody else or something to stay consistent. Mm-hmm. So that is beautiful. So on the Mizell Show, we have Tinder. We have Patience. We have... Consistent. Consistent. And we have... And Selfish. And Selfish. We want to know what your word is. We're not going to say word of the year because it might change every month. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we are, I we think are as huge... you individually grow, your word can adapt and change. Yes. And that I feel like. As your these, seasons grow. Right. Those yeah. growths and those benchmarks. So you may think they're going to take a year. They may take two. Yeah. They may take three months. Mm-hmm. I think it all just. And that's what I don't like about resolutions is that it puts a time restriction on things that mm. you it may take less time, it may take more. I agree with that. So yeah, we want to hear your word. And to challenge even more, you want to share your word and hop on a podcast with us? Hey. Hey, we would love to have you Let on. Go. Appreciate you guys. So if you guys are enjoying this, definitely leave us a review. Give us the feedback. If there's something you guys want us to talk about, reach out to us on our website, at themizelshow.com. There is a contact section. You can put it in there. We would love to hear about it. Or you can always go over to Instagram at themizelshow. Also, as always, don't forget to screenshot this episode and just add it to your stories and tag us on Instagram, on Facebook at The Mizell Show. Thanks, guys. Are you loving The Mizell Show? Well, we love you all. And did you know that you can have me and Steven talk to your team or a group of 25 of your friends. All it takes is 25 people showing up on either a Zoom call, a Facebook Live, or really anywhere, hopefully in person sooner rather than later. But how do you get us? So all you have to do is email themizelshow at gmail.com or you can direct message us on Instagram at the Mizell Show.